What's up, Liron here. Thank you for joining me in another video. In this one, I'm going to show you how I painted this beautiful, lovely uh, scene. Before that, I do want to wish you a happy new year. 2020 is just around the corner. I'm going to have another video before it comes, but um, I hope you had an amazing 2019 and I hope you're looking forward to 2020. I know I am for sure. Uh, and I hope you're enjoying the holiday. So with that being said, this process. Today, I want to focus on nothing. What do I mean by that? Nothing. Yes, I want to focus on just painting, just executing the painting process. Why? Because most painting processes you'll go through are going to be just that. It's not necessarily a glorious adventure or anything like that. It's fun for sure, but it's not necessarily this crazy thing. You just paint. And the reason I say this is that I think a lot of people expect more, but the process of improving a skill set is very grueling. It's just practice after practice after practice. And this is what we're going to do today. We're just going to paint it as we see it. I'm not going to put any emphasis on uh, painting it accurately or on simplifying. I'm not going to put an emphasis on values or on, or on temperature. I'm just going to paint. Okay, so with that being said, let's take it to the table and get started. So let's draw this. And uh, my goal, again, isn't anything particular, really. Uh, it's just to execute the painting process. And what you learn with time is that most paintings aren't anything spectacular necessarily. The process of producing them is actually very simple. It's just doing and repetition. And uh, a lot of people have this resistance of, you know, for painting and for practicing. And a lot of it comes from fear. People are afraid that um, they won't be able to get the result they want. They won't be able to. But, but really, this is like not... Fearing the process itself is is such a beginner's level, in my opinion. I'm not saying it to, to, to bash anyone, but you, at the very minimum, you have to want to practice. And this is something that, what I'm trying to say is that it's nothing fancy. It's just doing the steps, uh, sometimes with no expectation of getting a good result. It's so funny how, you know, people get discouraged when they make a painting and it doesn't turn out the way they want. If you can get to a headspace where it doesn't turn the way you want it to and you're actually happy about it, that's a really good place to be in because that's that's where I'm at. I mean, a lot of my paintings aren't... You have to understand, sometimes you see someone's paintings and you think, oh, they're so advanced and, and like they, they must love everything they're making and that's just not true. Uh, in fact, the more you grow, the more you see the missed opportunities and things you could have done differently and... It never ends, so don't worry if you're in a, in a place where you don't feel like it's a really good place. Um, that's most of the paintings is just doing. And this is something I'm always trying to put an emphasis on, just doing, just practicing, nothing fancy. And I'm living proof, just go check out some of my old videos and you'll see how I wasn't that good, especially when I got started I was actually really bad at painting. Uh, I didn't know what I'm doing. I had no idea. Drawing, I kind of had a good base to start with. I improved greatly since too, but um, but drawing, I had more of a base. With painting, it was a completely new skill for me. I had no idea what I'm doing, okay? So um, be happy with where you are and learn to really love the process. It's, it's so cliche, but that's just the way it works. So I'm, I put in all the sails because that's like some of the largest shapes here. Uh, now, what I want to do before I even go over the details down there is I'm just trying to uh, get the indication of where the light and shadow on the cells are. I'm sorry if there's a bit of background noise coming through. There's a lot of construction works lately and there's always some of it. So, sorry about that. Um, as for the cells, I just tried measuring this length compared to the entire photo. And what I found was that this is about half. So, I went with half uh, and then I placed the outer line as you've noticed. And then I started filling in the details, okay, for the, the sides of the sail, the other sails, just slowly. Now here's something really interesting happens, and I can make the drawing process really long, but I'm trying not to always, I'm trying to get to the, the, the meaty part of the painting. But here you see this pattern on the sail, which is probably ropes, it actually influences how the shadow is cast. So you want to have that in consideration. Same thing here, you see there's this pattern because of the ropes that you want to get uh, in your paintings. Now here comes something really cool. I love how this sail casts a shadow on this sail. So same thing, casting a shadow. Um, and I won't lie, when I'm painting for a YouTube video, I'm in more of a hurry. 
because I want to make sure that the video doesn't end up being too long and, um, and I know some don't mind the length, uh, but many do and I know people don't have all the time in the world and I'm trying to get to the gist of things. Plus I have a lot of work always so I'm kind of in a hurry. I do have some vacuum quote unquote time where I just paint for myself. Uh, and then I'm really like under no pressure, most for the most part, sometimes I, I do feel it, but I'm trying not to have any pressure uh, and to just enjoy uh, doing and painting, which is uh, ultimately what leads to the best results, funny enough. Um, so now I'm in a bit of a hurry sometimes, but uh, I am trying to still preserve the quality of what I see in the painting. Now what I'm going to do is just paint a couple of loose ripples, okay? They're very loose here, uh, not too well defined, like that. This is the sea level once again, it's about a third, a little under, less than a third. Now the shadowy part of the boat is here. And then we also have a cast shadow probably by one of the sails, and here we have people. Now to get all of the people in, I'm not drawing them individually, first I'm drawing the entire shape of people. Okay, so I'm starting here with on the left, I'm just drawing the entire kind of outline of where the people are. This is probably like a, a just a, a new, renewed old model of this boat because, you know, boats like these, I don't think they're active anymore. Um, now it's a two masts uh, ship or I don't know what you'd call it, like a sailboat, sail ship. I don't know, it has the flag, uh, two flags here. So I'm going to get one and two like so, one of them is kind of triangular because of the angle, which I love. Um, you let me know in the comments what model it is because I know nothing about these. Now this is a really cool part with tons of wires, okay, just tons of them. I'm not even gonna draw all of them. So now we're done with the drawing, we'll get to painting this. I'm gonna start with an initial wash in which I cover everything but what's white. So because this white here is so glaringly white, I'm gonna start with just doing negative painting around the shape of the cells. This is something a lot of people have problems with, so what I suggest is you just go over the lines that you wanna avoid, and you just avoid them. So here we go, you see like this. You just make them pop a little more, so I know that these areas are not to be painted. You can try out multiple things, you can go like this, if this works for you, whatever you want. I prefer to leave it empty and just sometimes I may just strengthen the highlight. But the real skill is in constantly looking at the reference, looking at the painting, looking at the reference, looking at the painting and figuring these stuff out as you go along because you just aren't able to figure everything out in advance. That's the reality of it. Sometimes it's very hard and you have to do some things while in the painting process. Okay, so with that being said, let me grab the paint and we'll get started. I just noticed now, this is really skewed, so I'm going to put it here. Sometimes this happens, you just mess up completely. This goes here. So you see I'm flexible, I fix my mistakes. This is much closer to being here, it goes up up at a much stronger angle. Okay, now let's get to paint. And for the first wash, uh, I'm just gonna mix some blue. It's gonna be a very, um, I wanna avoid necessarily ultra bright colors here, so I don't mind that things are a little contaminated. I do try to clean the palette a bit more because I know some people find it helpful to better follow the process. But I, I just, I'm just interested in a pool of paint that will uh, allow me to work for a long period of time. Okay, so just mostly blue and then a bit of everything. Okay, so here we go. I'm gonna get started, top to bottom. Okay, I ideally should work at more of an angle but then it's a bit hard to film. So uh, we're taking some risks and chances here. <laughs> and this is gonna be the sky blue. I'll add just a bit more blue to make it a little purer. I'm using a big brush, this is an Escoda, I got, a, I got it recently, I'm very happy with it. I'm using a big one because it makes things a whole lot easier, I don't have to work ultra carefully and um, I just get to cover large spaces, it has good capacity, um, it can contain a lot of, can retain a lot of water, uh, so I love that brush. So here we go, just around the sails, now work with the direction of the brush. If you go like this, as I showed you in a video, it's hard to control the width of the line, so work parallel to the direction you're painting, okay? This is really important. Now I can go over this line, because remember, I'm just leaving the highlights on the sails. So here we go, or on the boat too, on whatever I see actually. I'm, I'm gonna leave the highlights on everything that I see. I'm gonna try. And I may make mistakes, that's just part of it, because it's sometimes hard to tell exactly what's where, and uh, if I do, I'll fix them and we'll 
continue, so it's not a big deal. Uh, here we have, so here I already made a mistake, let's just soak that back, come back, and go like this. You see there's a, a bit of a highlight here. There's one here too, but I'm not gonna be too much of a perfectionist, otherwise I'm just gonna suffer through this. Um, a bit of everything really, just to neutralize the blue a bit more. I don't want it to be super bright as I mentioned. This is between the sails, this is a shadow, this is a shadow, this connects the shadows, which I love. There is no room here for over accuracy, you just have to put in the shapes as best as you see them, and then hope for the best. Uh, if you really want to be super hyper accurate, what you will need to do, for the most part, is to work in smaller sections. I'm okay with that, I just don't enjoy it as much. So. Um, if you work in smaller sections, you'll have better control, you'll be able to better tell uh, what you're looking at, the values that you you can just focus on, for example, one sale at a time, or the background, or whatever. I like to do it this way, just more fun, and I guess I like the extreme sport <laughs> that's watercolor painting. This goes all the way here, now the sky gets much lighter, so I'm gonna lighten things up just a bit around the bottom, I'm gonna continue with this shape here. I'm gonna go over everything, the people. Now, you know, I always love to show all sorts of primary colors in my paintings. I'm actually, I'm a big fan of showing some yellows, some blues, some reds. So I'm actually gonna charge back into these some warmth. Um, just feels like the right thing to do, especially up top where, you know, the sun is a bit more impactful. Um, and then I'm gonna go back to my blue for the most part over this. I know this is a relatively detailed first wash. Um, sometimes they are like this for me, sometimes they aren't. The boat, uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna get some uh, warmth in there, okay? Um, the highlights aren't gonna be really um, white here, it's still dark, so I'm gonna cover the whole thing up. Um, like so. Now the water, I do want to get a little darker as we get closer as it gets closer closer to us, the viewer. That's something that's really important to help with the sense of depth. Uh, it's something I talk about a lot. So this isn't enough for me. I'm actually gonna put in a bit more blue and perhaps a bit more red. Let's see, you know what, let's, add, let's neutralize it a bit more. So we go more towards a muted green, okay? Now, we still have a chance, actually the entire water should be darker, if I really want to stay loyal to the reference, but let's, let's not go overboard, <laughs> if you get my pun. Uh, sorry about that. Um, that was lame. Uh, but I'm actually really uh, impressed with myself that I came up with this on the spot. Um, so here we go, like that. Now, while it's still wet, I still have a chance to do something, so let's just, let's go crazy. Add some interest to the boat, like so. Now, I hope that the rest is still wet because this gives me an opportunity to blend some edges, okay? Uh, and this is something that will really help the sense of fluidity and fun and, and energy of the painting. So I'm just blending some edges that I see in the reference photo are blended. And notice how this gives it a more rounded look. Because whenever you have these gradual transitions, it means that the shape is rounder. So you see, this is really nice. Here as well, just to round things up a little. And if you're in a pinch, you can always just go like this with a bit of a piece of toilet paper and or, or you know, tissue, whatever. And you can do these kinds of things. Now I did miss a small highlight. I'm just gonna lift it back. Hopefully I'll be able to. Just around here. It's not too important, but I'll try lifting it back. Now the beautiful part about making these types of washes is once you're done with them, you're like, wow, there's so much going on here that I'll really enjoy the painting. So it gives you more motivation to work harder on the next stage because it looks so good, okay? Now one last thing I am tempted to do, and I know I already wrapped up this stage, is to add some kind of an indication of ripples or waves. Um, because it's, it's just too good not to do it. It's just now, this is the perfect stage. So what you want to do is add some general ones, perhaps, all around. And uh, and then later on we'll put in the shadow, you'll have these as, as a backup, you see? So I'm just putting in a few of these, make them smaller the farther they go. 
and the larger the closer. I'm gonna make some of them a bit more green, uh, like this. And some of these you won't even see, which is great. Some of these you will see, but I do wanna put some of them in. Okay, now let's wait for it to dry. So for me, this is a very simple and straightforward step. I know a lot of people look at this and they really are nervous and they lose it. They're like, what do I do next? For me, again, really simple. All I'm trying to do in the next stage is to indicate the shadows. So I'm gonna start top to bottom. And especially with these kinds of shapes that are very vertically oriented, you have a bit of an easier time. You just move along the painting. So I'm gonna start from top to bottom. Uh, as I mentioned, there is a bit of red here. I'm gonna start from the flags. Let's, let's just get to it, you know? Um, so I'm just gonna put in some details on this flag, some very strong red. And I love how the width isn't even of the lines I put, because that will help with the effect of the waving flag. Okay, now here we have uh, the second flag. I'm gonna try and recreate it as much as I can without going into too many details. Usually I won't even, wouldn't even bother, but I do want to show it as properly as it's in the top section of the painting. Um, a lot of viewers' eyes are gonna be attracted to this detail. And in fact, let me zoom in a bit because you probably can't see much, sorry about that. Um, I need to get a better camera so that I can film from afar and have a really high quality optic zoom and digital zoom so that I can just zoom in and properly uh, show everything without physically zooming in. So just phys uh, zooming in and editing later. Because if I do it with this one, it doesn't turn out that well. So now let me zoom back out and we'll continue with the cells and the other details. So I do want some flow and I don't want to start that strong with all of the masks and everything. So I'll start like that. Uh, it's gonna be mostly neutralized colors and I'm keeping it fairly light and warm. Why? Simply because it's top, it's closer to the sky. That's really my only reason for doing doing that okay so here we go just this line magic is in simplicity remember so you don't want to over complicate things that you don't need to so that's that uh we got a couple of wires running across i'm considering saving those for later but just putting in maybe one or two major ones i'm gonna use the rigor brush for the rest okay i don't want to uh, overdo this section now here we have this um i guess piece that holds the mast together, so I'm gonna get that in. And as you can see, my lines are far from perfect. Uh, but here we go. Now the mast itself, the uh, sail itself is fairly blue. I'm gonna mix some pure blue and that layer underneath it is gonna show. It's gonna look really nice, I think. So uh, because I use warm, as I talked about in the video about glow, if you use warm and then even if it dries and you glaze on top of it, uh, it can look really nice. Uh, if you glaze cool over warm, even if it dried already. Uh, now it gets lighter towards the bottom, which I do want to capture, so let's forget about that section for a moment. Uh, this goes like that. Just a couple of indications here. And as it gets lighter, I'll switch to a warmer value and to a lighter, to a warmer color and a, lo a warm, um, lighter value. <laughs> I just don't remember how to talk sometimes. So here we go, like that. Now what's really gonna make this look nice is the frame around it. Again, darker frame around it. I'm gonna use a bit of, I don't know, violet for that. So kind of, and I messed it up probably. I went overboard. This part shouldn't be painted, but you know what, let's improvise. Let's improvise, you see? I'm gonna lift back some of this. These cells are really confusing. So you see here, it should end here but I'm gonna improvise based on what I already did. Plus we're gonna have the mask there. So you always have to match how you work with what's happening on paper. That's just the nature of watercolor. Now notice how I'm looking for a direct continuation of the mask. I'm not just guessing, I'm going with my hand, it's called ghosting and I'm figuring out where it is, okay? But back to the previous point, which is far more important. You have to um, be flexible. And if you mess a part of the process up, you really sometimes have to be able to just say, okay, no big, uh, I'm just gonna continue um, and, and figure out how I can improve it regardless. So now I'm gonna add a bit of light here and this is gonna be a lengthy second wash. 
because uh, there's just a lot involved in it, okay? Uh, I'm rendering the entire shapes of everything. After this wash, the painting is done for the most part, okay? Um, I can go even bluer. Let's get some of that phthalo blue I have next to it, just to add something refreshing. Like so, get it to the corner here. And we're gonna work our way around the cell that's more at the back. And I am, I do wanna blend some of this. It's not gonna be perfect really, but um, I hope it's gonna look good. Remember, I don't have anything in mind for this one other than just to practice the process. So if I can practice the process in an immersed way and to truly try, that's really good enough for me, okay? And ideally, I shouldn't film this kind of a thing, but it's okay to film it like once in a while, you know, I do want to share with you some of those stages as well, okay? Ideally, to do this practice and to really be in it, uh, you don't want to necessarily film, you want to do it very freely and, and be in the moment fully, but you know, Life isn't perfect, and uh, I'm showing you all the small imperfections. Uh, so now I have a, an opportunity to fix this line that I messed up, but I, I think I'll just go over it again. <laughs> Otherwise, I'm just, I don't know, just looking for trouble, I guess. Uh, but hopefully the shapes start to make sense. Um, I'm trying to vary the temperature, but I don't have anything in mind, so there's not an awful lot of planning behind, you know, what's warm and what's cool. Aside from what I said, like the top is a little cooler, that's fine. Um, and here we go with this sail. The sky could have been probably a little lighter. And I knew that I may need to lighten it up, but that's fine. Uh, going over the sail. And notice how there is no urgency really. I don't have to connect everything 100% always. So I'm not too nervous about letting this section dry a bit. I'm fine with that, it's not the end of the world. Now let's blend this edge of the sail a bit, have a bit of a gradual transition. There is another detail here. I'm just picking up a bit of everything really. I don't, sometimes I don't care what the exact color is. Uh, let's warm it up just a tad bit and get uh, this messed in as well. Again, you simplify, you create the optical illusion as if there's something there more than what it seems. You know, there, there's basically not a lot of things there. I'm gonna add some more information here. And now we can continue with the mast. So a direct continuation would be somewhere around here. Not necessarily where I sketched it originally. And I'm fine with that, okay? Uh, this goes here. And actually, while we're at it, let's get the people in the boat. So uh, I'm gonna start just getting in most of them with gray, but then we'll add here and there some touches of color uh, to add more interest, okay? And while we're at it, we're, we'll also probably get some of the um, ropes and wires and all of those things. So I'm gonna warm it up a bit, just a bit of yellow. These are all very subtle changes, okay? So uh, don't worry if it's, it's, it shouldn't be too strong, in fact. Um, just subtle changes of, of temperature. And I just want to get this section right. A bit of uh, coolness, just to some sections. And I didn't even necessarily go close, warm, far, cool. I kind of broke these, these rules and I'm fine with that too. Um, these do cast shadow on the body of the boat, the sail. So I'm going to connect that while I'm at it. Connect it to words here. I'm going to leave a bit of a highlight for the edge of the boat. And then we're gonna have some shapes here accompanying this. Um, and then I'm gonna darken. Because the people here, they have to be much, much darker. I know I'm gonna have to darken, it was part of the plan. Um, I just wanted to get something initial first. And then, you know, just to show there are a couple of faces here and there, I'm just gonna put in just a couple of face-like blobs. Okay, now. On to, um, hmm, what shall we work on now? Let's work on this cell. So again, uh, blue. Fairly dark, but not as dark as you'd necessarily think. If you go too dark, you, just, you can just come back with some water, spread it out, and you're good to go. Uh, I'm gonna close this off here. Now notice something cool, as I mentioned, the edges. So the right edge is blurred, blended. So I'm going to blend it like so. The left one I'm going to leave sharp. 
but I did mess up its shape, so let me try and fix it. I didn't really work with the ideal direction for my uh, hand, so here we go. A bit overworked, but that's fine. It's gonna work still. Um, a bit of brown for the mast, so let's just go for it. Like this. Here we go, and then I'm gonna connect it with this kind of a thing, but I have to darken it just at least a bit. Like so. And then we're gonna connect this whole thing. I don't wanna do the wires yet or the ropes. I will put in some of the more major parts connected to the ropes, but um, I'm gonna leave those for the rigger brush to do them a little more gracefully. Because <laughs> if I try and put them in now, it's gonna be a big fat mess. But in any case, here we go. Big fat mess, I should have said. I'm, I'm terrible with the puns today. Uh, now again, I have to work with the direction of my hand, so let me do this a little more carefully, like so. And close it off like that. With a bit of, I want to do some, you know, folds like that. I don't know why, it looks nice. Plus there are some, you can see some of the shapes of the wires behind it and some of the, um, not texture, but the, you know, the illustration on the mask. So I'm just going to get that in as well, like this like that, uh, a bit of it here too, in fact, here as well. Okay, yeah, that's now, now I'm just, I'm just doing nonsense. I should continue with the bottom part of the boat. So I'm gonna add a bit of carbazole violet, a bit of yellow. These two sometimes neutralize each other. A bit of red there. And we'll get started with the bottom section of the boat. What's important for me here is to leave myself a bit of a highlight here between the people and the bottom section of the boat. Okay, so I'm going at it like that. And I stopped here because it's gonna be blended, okay? Uh, so something like that. It's okay to put something first, put it in first, not so gracefully, and then fix it and fix the edges and everything. I'm gonna show you how. So I'm just putting the paint to paper, see like that. It's just a big mess, but now I'll come back with some water and I'll blend this edge just a bit. Okay, now I'll dry the brush on the towel and do it again. And hopefully the shape will make sense. Now, onto that, I wanna put in some darker darks, mainly using my blues, because it's gonna contrast the rest, which will look nice. And um, a bit of the violet too. So just these two together, running out of blue here as always. Uh, and just putting in, you see, like that, just a couple of shadows and details and whatnot. And this really helps to enhance the look and feel. But I do want to make this red stronger too. So let's get a bit of pure red. I'm not gonna put it over the white space. I'm just gonna put it like this. You see here, this wraps around here. Maybe there's a secondary kind of illustration there. The bottom section of the boat is still dark. So let's get it to be dark like so. And now, obviously, we're gonna connect it onto the shadow underneath the boat. Now here you have to detach yourself from what's actually there, the ripples, and kind of paint it as you see it. There isn't really um, a good way to describe it, it's just complex and you have to work your way through it, okay? Um, I still haven't found a way to verbalize how to really paint reflections or shadows on the water, so you just have to do your best and try and focus on the edges, okay? Because that's really where the shape kind of shifts. Uh, now, the, the, the reflection is mostly, I guess, blue and green, so I'm gonna try and keep those colors a little more dominant, at least where it's close to us. And I barely, I can barely see the drawing I did earlier, and that's fine. I don't need it, I'm just following the shape of the boat. See, so I'm trying to reflect the shape of the boat in the water. Not easy, something you get used to doing using, you know, these kinds of brush marks. I'm gonna add later on many more ripples to the water, some more effects. Um, this side is also a bit in the shadow. I'm gonna use more water to help the paint move a bit at the risk of getting some cauliflowers. I'm fine with that. This can be a little lighter. Let's go back with some water. I don't mind disturbing the shape that it currently has. 
Let's close off these gaps. Now the area directly under the boat should be fairly dark. So I'm just making sure that it's dark enough and it reflects how dark this area is actually. So let's go like this and let's darken it up. This shouldn't be here. And add some secondary ripples that kind of touch the existing ones, not necessarily fully like this, you see? This can help enhance the look and feel and I like how these layer next to the wet and wet ones we did earlier, as I mentioned these were a good preparation. Um, and I think with that we're mostly done. Notice how the water, generally speaking, uh, I did it fairly light and gradual. You can add a very thin glaze and just make it more visible. Um, I may do that in a moment. Let's first uh, go back to some areas here and add some darks, okay? I'm gonna use the rigger brush for that. This is in fact us finalizing the painting, okay? The painting is almost done. I'm just gonna add a couple of final touches. Sorry, that's my head. I just had to uh, look up close uh, and see what's going on there. I'm gonna have to get neutral tint. I think I'll find it very useful for getting darker values fast. Um, and not black. I don't like to use the color black purely. It doesn't matter if it's slightly warm, slightly cool. I find it's almost always a bit out of place. So here, I didn't get this det detail in. Now, what you wanna do is when you're, while you're working on this detail, stay there for a few moments. Stay there and see what else you have there. Okay, so if you have a couple of ropes that are connected, sketch them out, all of the information you see. Try and sketch everything out before you move away from an area, okay? Now uh, there's a rope running from the flag itself, like that. Just get everything you need before you move on. We have a bit of this kind of a thing going on. We have this thick area and then this. This obviously should be darker. I used the wet wash because I wanted it to flow, but now is a good opportunity to darken all of these things. And here we have a, just a bunch of ropes, a bunch of wires running around that you wanna get all in. Ideally, I'd also paint this a little larger, which would allow me to get a bit more details in, but that's fine. That's our lesson for uh, the next time. Uh, what else? Let's start getting these ropes in. This is actually a bit longer. So it goes all the way up to here. And then I can do this kind of a thing get the wire here. The regular brush can be tricky, so it just takes time to get used to. There's a bit of this going on. Um, just a bunch of ropes from all sorts of different areas. This is a very nice section uh, with all of these smaller details, with these rollers, I guess. There's a bunch of stuff here. There's one here, and these you have to just train yourself to do all of these motions. Uh, you don't want to, by the way, overdo all of these details. I'm just showing you the initial steps. Once I feel like this is too much, we're going to stop. But uh, in any case, you want to make yourself very comfortable with a multitude of different stroke directions. You want to go like this, like that, like all sorts of directions to get the different types of lines in. Okay, that's really important. There's going to be a rope coming through here, going over the body of the boat, the hull of the boat, I guess. Um, like that. This is more like drawing, so if you love drawing, if you're, if that's your strength, uh, you may love this stage. You don't have to worry about things drying on you, you don't have to worry about almost anything. Um, like so, this should be rounder, I kind of messed this up. So just, I'm gonna fix that. There is an area here, I just need more water here. And then there's this area here, a bit of a rope here just a bunch of ropes and you want to get as many in as you feel like you need to tell the story that this is a boat and there's all the rigging. You call it rigging, right? Uh, and, uh, and that's it. Once you're done, you're done. So a bit of these here. There's one that goes really aggressively over the, the sail and over this. So as long as the general direction is fine, you see I'm not too worried about getting it fully uh, accurately. Now what I think we'll do is let this dry and I'll actually glaze over the ocean a bit to get it to be a little darker and, and look a bit closer to us. Even though normally I wouldn't, I want to do this for you just to test it out and see what it looks like. So everything is dry now and on an official level we're done here. 
but there are a couple of things we can do, obviously, just adding a bunch of highlights here and there to make it more interesting. I could use some opaque paint, but I think I'll go with the pen for this. Now, if you notice around uh, these different sections, there are all sorts of interesting highlights that are caused due to the, this wooden piece is shiny, light is smooth, sh light shines on it, but then where the rigging are, it adds a shadow. So, um, so it, it leads to this interesting texture that I just want to get. It's like it catches the light in some spots. Okay, that's basically it. Um, what else? Uh, I don't want to overdo anything here, really. This is completely optional, but just putting in some of these, some of the uh, wires will catch the light and cast a nice little, um, I don't know, just a nice little highlight over a shadow. So some of these could work, some of these here across the boat, this one goes up here, uh, the edge here could be a little lighter, this is just, you know, it's just fun, you, you don't have to do this, some people think it's gimmicky, I do sometimes think it's gimmicky, but I like to sometimes do that, and it, you know, every other medium has that ability, uh, if it's opaque, um, so why not do it in watercolor too, in my opinion. Uh, it adds another dimension to it. But in any case, I think we can also add, by the way, highlights to some people, just to differentiate some of them from the environment. It's just a nice little thing to do, nice little touch. And we're done with this section of just the water. Uh, there are quite a lot of ripples there, so I'm just gonna add those in. I wonder if they make sense in the context of the painting rather than the, the photo, because the photo does have a few differences, but I think it'll work nicely and you see it makes it look more like water. Um, and it actually does add a bit of a sense of movement and, and realism, I think. Let me show you up close. It's just a good combination to get this to look more realistic. Um, sometimes I don't like to use this pen because uh, it's it feels to me either like a neutral white or a um, cool white. And I love warm colors, I love using a lot of warm colors uh, in my paintings. I'm actually gonna leave the ocean, by the way, as it is, I'm not gonna go over it at all, I like it that way. Um, but I like to um, keep my paintings fairly warm many times, and um, when you go in with this cool white, it can sometimes look really off. But here, because the temperature is kind of all over the place anyway, I don't know, it works out nicely. Uh, so just a bunch of ripples. If you want to darken some of them, you can just go over them with some water and maybe very diluted paint. So if you want to darken this section or this section, you see, it even helps it kind of smear it around. Um, you just don't want to overdo it because there's paint under it. You don't want to reawaken it. But hopefully now this makes a bit more sense as uh, the sea and as having some movement. See, there's always these, these beautiful ripple patterns uh, that I love. I really love the way these look. And you can use your finger to smear it a bit. You see, nothing happens and it looks uh, good sometimes. Uh, but in any case, now truly it is time to <laughs> wrap it. I can't help myself but to add more and more small details. But now we can truly wrap this one up. Now, the only thing left to do is to remove the tape. I already signed this, so let's do that. And I know everyone always wants uh, to see what the end result looks like. So, here it is, and it's full glory. I really hope you enjoyed this one, and uh, perhaps you gained something new from it. You saw how I practiced just painting something for the process, for improving. Uh, with that being said, let's wrap it up. So I hope you enjoyed uh, this process, and I hope I got a decent result from up close and from afar. Uh, that's how most painting processes of mine, that's what they look like. Nothing special, it's just me painting. I hope you enjoyed joining uh, in on this one with me. Um, I want to wish you once again a happy um, new year. Once it's come really right around the corner, I really look forward to 2020 and to improve everything. My content, my teaching, my painting skills, my everything. So lots of good things to look forward to. I do want to ask that if you enjoyed this video, you give it a thumbs up and comment down below because YouTube loves that and it shows YouTube that this video is good and to show it to more people. Uh, if this is something you're interested in, letting go, painting loosely, as you know, link to my frustration-free watercolor course down in the description box below. I really appreciate it. Thank you so much to anyone who got it. And with that being said, take care and I will see you again in the next vid real soon.